one of the most horrific executions of the Tudor period, saw Henry VIII's Lord Chancellor, Sir Thomas Small, a very pious and religious man, go to his execution upon the scaffold of Tower Hill. He was a well-respected man who served the king loyally, and Moore was a man of principle who could not support Henry VIII's changes to the church, and he also could not support Anne Boleyn as the Queen of England. Moore's execution on Tower Hill was performed by an axeman who efficiently took his head clean off in one swift blow. However, this was not the end of the story, as his head was then placed on a pike high above London Bridge. Then his body was laid to rest within the walls of the Tower of London. However, his head was located inside of somewhere completely different, and the true story of this is shocking and remarkable. Sir Thomas More refused to take the oath in which he recognised Henry VIII's second wife, Anne Boleyn, as Queen, and also the Tudor King as the supreme head of the Church of England. He was even forced to resign from his role as the Lord Chancellor on the 16th of May, 1532. However, he stayed inside of Henry VIII's court as an advisor. However, his enemies then dug their claws in. People became vocal about his refusal to support the changes, and because of this he would fall from grace spectacularly. He was even accused of working with a nun who predicted the death of Henry VIII, which was said to have been treason, and in the April of 1534, Sir Thomas More was forced to meet with the King's Privy Council to discuss the oath of succession and supremacy. He was ordered to accept the changes, and swear his support as so many had, and he did make some concessions saying Anne Boleyn could have been proclaimed the Queen, however he did not accept the validity of Henry VIII and Anne's marriage, and he said this was not lawful in the eyes of God. He continually refused, and to get more to come around, Henry VIII had him sent to the Tower of London. It's believed as a threat more than anything, but Sir Thomas More was put up in comfortable lodgings inside of the Tower, but he was willing to die for his beliefs, and he was brought to trial on the 1st of July, 1535. He was called in front of a court, which was made up of Anne Boleyn's family members, including her father, and Moore, being incredibly intelligent, managed to wrap up the judges in his arguments, and he refused to answer questions. But the prosecution's key witness was Richard Rich, a man who is regarded to have been one of the most barbaric of the Tudor period, and Rich claimed that, in his presence, Thomas More denied the king's supremacy over the church. Because of this evidence, More was then found guilty of treason and was sentenced to death and he continued to speak out. The standard sentence for a traitor was hanging, drawing and quartering, but the king then commuted this to beheading, as he had been a friend and a loyal companion for so long, which was said to have been more straightforward and less horrific. On the 6th of July, 1535, Sir Thomas More was led out of his prison cell inside the Tower of London and was guided up to Tower Hill, on the short walk north of the tower by a number of guards. There were a huge number of witnesses and the public flocked to see the execution of Sir Thomas More, Henry VIII's Lord Chancellor, and he was a man himself who had treated others brutally throughout his life, as he had beaten Protestants and treated them roughly. He wasn't the most liked by parts of the crowd, but it was noted that about nine he was brought out of the tower, his herd was long, his face pale and thin, and carrying a red cross in his hand. He often lifted his eyes to heaven. A woman meeting him with a cup of wine, he refused it, saying, Christ at his passion drank no wine, but gal and vinegar. Another woman came crying and demanded some papers. She said she had left in his hands when he was Lord Chancellor, to whom he said, Good woman, have patience but for an hour. The king will rid me of the care I have for those papers and everything else. Another woman followed him crying. He had done her much wrong when he was Lord Chancellor, to whom he said, I very well remember the cause, and, as I were to decide it now, I should make the same decree. When he came to the scaffold, it seemed ready to fall, whereupon he said merrily to the lieutenant, 
pray sit, see me safe up, and as to my coming down, let me shift for myself. Being about to speak to the people, he was interrupted by the sheriff, and thereupon he only desired the people to pray for him and bear witness. He died in the faith of the Catholic Church, a faithful servant to God and the King. And kneeling, he repeated the Miserere psalm with much devotion, and rising up, the executioner asked him for forgiveness. He kissed him and said, Pick up thy spirits, man, and be not afraid to do thine office. My neck is very short. Take heed, therefore, thou strike, not a ray for having thine honesty. Laying his head upon the block, he bid the executioner stay till he had put his beard aside, for that he had committed no treason. Thus he suffered with much cheerfulness. His head was taken off at one blow and was placed upon London Bridge, where having continued for some months and being thrown into the Thames to make room for others, his daughter Margaret brought it, in, closed it in a leaden box and kept it for a relic. However, this was not the end of the grisly demise of Sir Thomas More. As mentioned, his head was placed on a pike above London Bridge, but his body was taken back inside the walls of the Tower of London and was carried into the chapel of St Peter at Vincula, where it was interred inside of a crypt alongside many others who were executed on Tower Hill. His body would be joined by the remains of thousands. And today, the body of Sir Thomas More is interred inside of an out-of-bounds tomb within the crypt which cannot be viewed by the public. However, what happened to More's head is remarkable and shocking. After it was taken to London Bridge, it was handed over to the Keeper of the Heads, the man who was responsible for maintaining the heads placed above the gatehouse of those who had been executed. These macabre exhibitions were intended to scare the people of London. But the head was dipped in tar and was placed 80 feet in the air. It was held there for around a month with thousands passing under the head of Thomas More and it was then replaced by one of his friends, Bishop John Fisher. But the head of More was not thrown into the River Thames as was customary. It's considered that his daughter, Margaret Roper, managed to bribe the keeper of the heads to knock the head of her father off the pike and that she then managed to gather this and take it away with her for reburial. She embalmed the head of her father, covering it in spices, and she managed to preserve it rather well. For taking the head of her father, a man considered by Henry VIII a traitor, she could have been imprisoned or even executed herself. But when Margaret died in 1544, the head of her father, Sir Thomas More, was buried next to her in the same vault. However, in 1824, this vault was opened and the head of Sir Thomas More was taken out of it and shown to the public inside of St Dunstan's Church in Canterbury. Many people continued to visit it, but there was some debate as to where the head of More actually was, as some said it had been actually buried inside of a tomb made for More inside of Chelsea Old Church. However, the majority of the evidence, which even includes eyewitness testimony, claims the head of Sir Thomas More was interred with his daughter. After a number of years, it was placed back inside of the Roper vault and it was even photographed by someone who looked at it through a grill and showed his daughter's lead casket, but the head of the man who had been considered one of the finest historians of the Tudor period. The demise of Sir Thomas More was shocking. He was for a long time a loyal member of King Henry VIII's government and staff, but he was a man of such strong morals and principles that he could not accept the changes that the king made to the nation. Because of this, he faced the ultimate punishment, and he would lose his head on the orders of his former friend, the infamous Tudor monarch, who in the years later would also order the execution of his second wife, Anne Boleyn, the very woman that Moore could not support, and she is buried close to the remains of Moore, inside of the chapel of the Tower of London. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.